Welcome. This week, we are going to go over lessons 45 to 48. How did it go last week using the math balance? Some of your children probably really loved it. Some of your children probably were just totally clueless and it did not help them. And if that happens to be your child, it's okay. Let them just play with the math balance if that's the case. You can use the abacus or something else that could help them understand those concepts a little bit better. It is not unusual for children at this age for some to struggle with understanding how the math balance works. So let them play, keep it fun. I know I say that a lot, but it's really true because children, even adults, we do better when we enjoy what we're doing. So don't stress, they're little, they'll get it. How was the geometry reflector? Did you, were you able to understand it? I hope the video was helpful. I know that's one of those tools that it just takes some practice to get used to it, to really see how it, you can see through it and how it reflects. Let's go see what materials we need for this week. This week, you're gonna need your abacus, your balance, the basic number card deck, these are centimeter cubes. This is a new item. We'll talk more about that soon. The reflector, the tiles, the place value cards, coins, and the worksheets. Lesson 45, the less game and reflections. So after the warm up, you'll see that it's titled less. So that's the activity starting to introduce and teach the term less to your children. So on the second page, that first paragraph called the less game, you're gonna need the basic number cards for this game. And it says you need three sets of 10. So just count out the numbers one through 10, three times. You're gonna mix those cards up and that's what you're gonna use for this game. Now it says that you're going to keep score with tally marks. There's not, it doesn't say you need the marker board in this lesson, but you can use the marker board if that's how you want to keep track of your tally marks. You could get a piece of paper and a pencil, or you can lay a pile of tally sticks out, and then whoever hits less gets to grab a tally stick. In this lesson, you will be using the centimeter cubes, which I have a handful right here. These are one centimeter in length in width and in height, thus a cube. We have our one inch tiles. Now you don't need this for the lesson. I just wanna show you that we will be using these for measuring at some point. So the child will be learning how to measure with one inch. They're also gonna to learn to measure with a centimeter. They're gonna learn how to compare, see how many centimeters are in an inch. I love this part of Right Start and how it's, these items are hands-on. They learn how to do this before they ever start using a ruler. So when they go to use a ruler, oh, it makes so much more sense. You'll also be using the centimeter cubes for the last section of the activities, and you'll be using the reflector here also. So you're gonna build a structure using the cubes. Your child will pretend like they're looking at the reflection, and they'll build the reflection of that shape, and then you'll swap they'll build a little structure and then you get to build the reflection and then you'll get to use the geometry reflector to put in between so it's just a fun way of practicing using the cubes building and understanding what reflection means lesson 46 more doubles and grouping you'll be using the math balance as well as the abacus in this uh, lesson so you're going to be putting you put five and it's really pretty self-explanatory, but I'm just gonna walk you through it anyway. So you ask them, you know, five and five, what does it make? And then we're gonna add a bead, then they're gonna work with six and six, and again with seven and seven, and you'll work that all the way through until it's 10 and 10. Then you'll take the concept that was learned on the abacus and apply it and review it on the balance. Now, when I said earlier, there are some children, maybe will struggle with this. 
let them struggle. But if they get into tears and it's really frustrating, stop. But struggling is actually good for you. Uh, research shows that a child will have better recall for something he learned after a bit of struggle. And think about it. Those areas that come really easy, eh, you know, they're just super easy. But when we have to kind of struggle a little bit, have to really dig deep and try to figure out the answer, yeah, it sticks with us more. We learn better with it. Same with your children. So we're going to review the doubles on the math balance. So you're going, to you're going to take these two pegs, you're going to place it on the six, both of them on the six. You're going to give two pegs to your child and on this side of the balance, they need to place them to get it to balance. They're not allowed to put both of these on the number six. It's okay if it takes them a while. Maybe they'll just move stuff around. Just keep an eye out on them and then maybe make a suggestion. Hey, let's let's leave this on the 10. Let's move this other peg around. Let's see what we can find. And by process of elimination, they're going to end up finding what makes the balance balance. And again, they can see that two sixes is the same as a one ten two, just like and if you need to reinforce it with the abacus. One ten, two ones. Notice the title of the second activity on that second page, counting with the abacus. A lot of people will say, but we're not supposed to count in Right to Start. And that's not true. We do want the child to understand how to count, but we want them to know what it means, what they're counting. That's why it's great to have the abacus so that they can see the quantity as they're counting it. We also want them to be able to subitize and see numbers without counting. Now, right now, we're going to work on counting. And so you're going to grab a bunch of tiles. Your child's going to have to count the tiles and keep track of it on the abacus. And then they'll take the place value cards and make that number with the place value cards, getting a lot of reinforcement of the numbers, seeing how to count, getting the final amount, getting to build it with the place value cards, just constantly reinforcing what a number is. They could see this number all day long and it may not even register to them what it is. But when they have to count out tiles and we get to 2102, then they have to find the 210 and the 2 and they build the 2102. It's reinforcing what this number is. It's just not some abstract number. They're seeing it. That's what makes this so great. Then the final activity, they're going to take that same group of tiles and they need to put it into some kind of order. It says you want to do it without having to count. And I think this, the wording in here is a little tricky. It, what it means is you don't want them to have to count by ones to see how many there are but you may have to count by fives or you may have to count by tens, just depending on how many tiles are being used. And you can see the example at the bottom of this page. You can't look at that and immediately know what the number is. At least I can't. So I had to look and see, yeah, there's five and there's three rows. There's 10 in each row. So then knowing that, then I can look at that quickly and know that it is 34. But I still had to see how many tiles were in the row. And then I had to look and see how many rows. So when it says tiles arranged, so counting is unnecessary, it means like counting by ones or, or tediously counting. So when we put them into groups like this, you can look, I don't have to count every single one. I just have to know that there's five 
in that little section and then there's another five so there's 10 in each row there's three rows and then there's four so i can do that without needing to count individually so that's what it means by not counting some of you may notice this some of you may not notice this i'm just going to point it out for those of you that do notice it at the top of the second page that first sentence it talks about putting the two weights on the six peg on the right side but in the lesson book it's showing it on the left side so there's a little bit of a typo here they'll have to correct it and you know down the road some of you may be watching this it's already corrected that's the beauty of being able to print in-house but for those of you that say on the right side do know that it is showing it on the left side and it's okay if you put those two on the six on the left side it's just as effective as if you were to put them on the right side lesson 47 nickels and estimating quantities i really appreciate how right start brings in their money as we're learning you know you have the penny it's it's similar to one bead you bring in the nickel it's the same as five beads i don't know i just feel like it really makes a easier connection to understanding the value of money by being able to compare it to what you see on the abacus we have the five which is like a nickel we have our penny which is a bead They've gotten familiar with the pennies in a previous lesson. Today we're focusing on the nickel. So when they see a nickel and a penny, six cents. See a nickel and two pennies, seven cents. The worksheet 12 is for practicing writing numbers. Notice in the explanation. It says you may want to keep extra copies available. So you may want to make copies of this so that gives them more to practice on. Because some children do. They need more practice on writing their numbers than others. So the activity counting to 210 by ones is just using the abacus. They're going to put the beads in individually. And again, as they're counting, they're seeing what it means. Two, four five oh we get to ten we get down here it's one ten one one ten two one ten three so forth one ten nine two tens in this lesson they are also going to work with estimating quantity you're going to grab between 60 and 70 tiles you're going to lay them out your child is going to guess you'll have one group of the large group of tiles then you're going to have 10 tiles so that way your child can compare between the larger group and the 10 and then kind of estimate or what i like to call guesstimate they're going to guess what is the number of course estimating is the uh, proper name for it they'll build their guess or their estimate with place value cards then you're going to have them put these tiles in order where they don't have to count them one by one then they can figure out how many there really are and how close they may have been last lesson for the week lesson 48 dimes and estimating with the al abacus so last week they learned about pennies in lesson 47 we introduced nickels well today we get to work with dimes and again because of the child working with the abacus it just makes it so much easier to understand what the quantity is for these different coins this is also where their observation skills will come in handy because you're going to have them look at these different coins to see what makes them different so that they can recognize and not get confused by a penny or a dime or a nickel i'm going to show you how to do the trading on the abacus and how to do this last part where you're going to give your child a number less than 10 and then they're going to enter that number on the wire and you're going to go all the way down you're going to do this 10 times 
so there's going to be different amounts entered onto each wire of the abacus. Then your child is going to estimate what they think is the total amount. When they estimate it, they will build that number with their place value card. Then they're going to go and do the give and take until they can figure out what the actual amount is. So you start off, you're going to ask your child to enter six on the first row. Then you're going to ask them to enter a number less than 10 on the next row. Can you enter a number more than two on the third row? And you're going to continue to challenge your child to do this. So I'm just going to put in some random numbers. Now you're going to ask your child if they can estimate what they think the beads are on this side of the abacus. So let's do that. Let's estimate. Um, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. I'm going to say 37. And you're going to build that. Your child will build that with the place value cards. So here we go. I built it. I'm going to set it right over here. Now, the way to figure it out is we're going to do the take and give. So we have two. We're going to put our two up here. We do it at the same time. We'll just do our two. Here I have five. I can do five here. I have two, I'll move this one, I'll move this one, here's three, oh, I have three, I can move that, I have seven over here, I have eight here, so I could do this, and I move my one over here, so what do I have? I have 51. I was way off. Well, not really way off, but I was off. <laughs> anyway, this is a lot of fun. I like the I like the whole I like the whole trade and give portion. I think that's so neat to see what is all messy come nice, neat, and tidy. Don't be surprised if your child likes that activity and wants to do it more than once. We're done for the week. I think this is going to be a fun week. Not only working with doubles on the balance, but getting to work with the nickels and the dimes. I know children just love working with money. So I hope it's a fun week and it's enjoyable. And next week, I will be back with lessons 49 through 52. Till then.